And with that, uh, I will uh, move over to uh, a tagline of our gold sponsor from uh, Berkeley Lights. Uh, it's a new mill teller that uh, will present uh, how to directly test individual T cell function with fewer cells. Okay, I hope you hear me now. Thank you very much, Christian, for the introduction. Thank you all for your time and attending this talk about directly testing individual T cell function with fewer cells. It's about a fascinating technology to assess T cell functions. Of course, there is already a lot of in, uh, available in terms of uh, functionality for T cells. And um, I don't want to go into too much detail about these uh, alternatives, but all of them have their caveats, their disadvantages, and uh, limited, for example, FUX just uh, requires super physiological stimulation. It has a high pressure, shielding forces, aerosols. There's a high variability between experienced users. If they put the gating, they can have to see to 30 to 50% differences in the results. Others like the chromium assays are a hassle because of the radioactivity. And uh, most of them cannot be multiplexed with functional analysis or with surface markers like um, Eli Spot. And there is no uh, single cell resolution for most of them or kinetic analysis. You would have to repeat experiments in order to get kinetic data. And finally, you wouldn't be able to recover the cells after you assay them in order to do follow up analysis. So a lot of questions remain unanswered in this regard. Like, uh, can a specific interferon gamma secreting cell kill a target cell? Or what would you do if you only have a few thousand cells, like from a spinal fluid sample, where you have a very low number of T cells? And uh, how long does it take for a T cell to kill a tumor cell? And uh, could you connect this killing activity directly to cell surface protein expression or gene expression? And do you really only need one T cell to kill multiple tumor cells? And if yes, how many? Or is it the other way around? Do you need multiple tumor T cells to kill a tumor cell? And uh, would you be able to link this information to the cytokine secretion? Imagine you would have the possibility to automatically clone over a thousand individual cells and setting up cell cell interaction for those, continuously assay them. Uh, over multiple time points, sorry, that was too quick, and um, get the information for linking the complex phenotype to the genotype and select and recover afterwards these individual cells of interest. We believe you have the system here on the left. It's the lightning platform that allows for cytokine secretion assays, for cytotoxicity assays, and uh, finally correlating this with the gene expression as well as the T cell receptor recovery and uh, the transcriptome with the mRNA recovery. The system hosts a chip like this in the middle. Here, here are 50 milliliter conical tubes for your agents and uh, 96 U button well plates sits here connected with a needle and tubing. So if you zoom into the chip, you will see that the tubing can interact with this inlet and here, of course, with the outlets there are channels that are teeming through it. And with light, we can then move individual cells into these nanowells. We call them nanopens because of the pen-shaped structure. It sounds like magic is uh, easy to explain. We shine lights on like a camera chip surface with millions of phototransistors. This light introduces, induces an electrophoretic force that then moves the cell. So wherever we move the light, we move the cell. We can repeat this for multiple cells, for co-culture experiments or for beads. It's done fully automated by the software. It's like having thousands of hands doing this for you. And the software would do this within 30 minutes, allowing you to um, define what you import. So if you would like to enrich for specific cells, you only would to have um, pre-stain them before importing it to the chip. In this case, we used uh, pre-staining for CD4, CD8, CD197, and CD45. By selecting the individual fluorescent channels, you could then uh, gate for those cells. And uh, here we click on CD4, CD8, showing you the data in the scatter plots. In green, the cells that are selected and positive for CD4 and CD8, 
the others in red will be ignored. If you click on the value, it shows you fluorescence intensity and it will show you the corresponding cell over here. This correlation between data and image allows you always to confirm that you don't see just an artifact, but it's a real uh, data point, a real cell. And um, the number of the pen is tracked throughout the process. The highlighted cell is shown here in yellow, the excluded ones in red, the positive ones that will be imported automatically in green. Of course, you have the possibility to manually change the selection. Once these cells are imported, they can be cultured on the chip. Uh, since temperature, CO2, and humidity is controlled, you see here hybridoma cells, and on the right, we have a human primary T cell proliferating after CD3, CD28 activation. During the time on, in these nanowells, you get a lot of morphological information like the diameter, circularity, roundness, compactness of these cells, as well as information about secretive factors and the function of these secretive factors cell motility, but, uh, the movement of the cell is tracked, and each um, image is a time-lapse of the time-lapse gives you the number of the cells, allowing for growth curves over time. Uh, same as for uh, giving you information on the specific secretion of the cell or a productivity. Cell-cell so interactions like a tumor cell that is killed by a T cell can be observed at the same time, as well as surface uh, markers on the cell with an antibody that has a fluorescent tag um, against these surface markers. We also offer upstream kits next to downstream kits. Here we have an antigen presenting bead kit that allows you to increase the efficiency of uh, proliferation of your T cells um, by presenting the peptides with an agonist antibody peptide HLA complex coupled beads with a tenfold higher intensity versus presenting the same peptide with dendritic cells. I will skip this in the interest of time, but you also will get information on the efficiency of the binding with uh, uh, measuring the ratio of the fluorescence in place peptide with the peptide that is provided by the user with the putative antigenic sequence. And you have an antibody that confirms the uh, that targets the specific confirmation of your complex, giving you a half-life of the stability for, for the complex between the peptide and HLA. Of course, you can proliferate then uh, these T cells from a non-detectable level to somewhere about 0.5%, where you get a really nice uh, concentration of T cells that can be measured and visualized with a fluorescently labeled tetramer. Initially, we developed this technology for antibody screening. If you have a single cell here, it will have the enough concentration since one cell in this one nanoliter equals a million cells in a milliliter, which is quite a high density, allowing to uh, screen for an antibody that is secreted here, diffuses into the channel and then binds to an antigen coupled to a bead. A secondary fluorescent antibody will visualize this. This happens just within minutes um, for multiple targets at the same time, allowing you to identify, in this case, an antigen-specific uh, antibody secreted by a single cell. Once you identify the cells, you want to export them and you do it just the same way you imported them. With the lights, you push them into the channel and then they are flushed into the well of your 96 value button plates it's sitting in the instrument. Um, another essay is looking at the surface markers like CD1 and 37, you could have a fluorescent antibody directed to CD8 as well. And watching the uh, T cell after activation by the antigen cell, the tumor cell, secret a cytokine. In this case, interferon gamma that will be bound to a bead with an antibody against interferon gamma. And the secondary interferon gamma antibody with a fluorescent label will visualize the cytokine on chip. This is a typical experiment where you see the T cells in, down here. The dark spots are the beads. The T cells are here again visualized with a CD8 uh, antibody. CD137 uh, shows the stimulation of the T cell. This is a, a surface protein. And you would recognize different levels of activation for the T cells, while the interferon gamma secretion is comparably high. In the overlay, you would see all this information combined. 
This allows you to compare different levels of interferon gamma secretion for different samples from different donors. And uh, then do the cytotoxicity assay with the same T cells. Here we have two tumor cells, just to show that only the tumor cell that directly interacts with the T cell is killed, while the other one remains unharmed. Interestingly, we see here a very rare and specific phenotype where the tumor cell seems to explode in a burst all over this nanowell. And it would be interesting now to export this T cell selectively and compare it to another T cell that only does a regular apoptosis indu induction. Of course, since we have timeless images, we can identify the time point when this happens by just looking at the caspase free activity at a certain time. This allows us to differentiate between fast killing and slow killing T cells. In this case, the fast killing one kills the tumor cell already after one and a half, two hours, while the slow killing one needs 14 to 16 hours. Again, you might want to export these selectively, next gene sequencing, you name it, and uh, look at the differences here. Of course, we showed also that this uh, measurement of cell surface proteins in this example correlates with what you would see on the fax. This is the fax data. This is the CAS cell analysis suit, uh, suit software that comes with the lightning system. You see very nice correlation. And um, you would also be able to export the data from CAS into Flojo because it's not a proprietary data format. It's comma separate value XMS or Flojo format, which then can be visualized in Flojo, just the same data to confirm the correlation. In, here we show that we can selectively enrich for CAR T positive cells that are still living. So anything that is stained by annexin A2, annexin 5 uh, will be a dead cell and will selectively not be Im imported and you enrich them for living CAR T positive cells. Another way to uh, expand the capabilities is to increase the multiplexing. We use different size speeds with different out of resonance and uh, the software would be able to automatically differentiate between these beats, identify TNF alpha, interferon gamma, and interleukin 2, and thereby allowing you to uh, characterize the different cytokine secretion levels and intensities. This is how this would look like in the experiment with the three different beats. The software will identify them and quantify it, allowing you to find subpopulations of T cells that secret only a single cytokine or a combination of any two of these cytokines or those, the majority would be all three of the cytokines. And then you could look at the proliferation of those looking for CD3 positive T cells. Uh, here, the first three would be the T cells that have seen the antigen and they proliferate nicely versus the um, CD19 knockout negative control. Of course, you might then want to get the T cell receptor sequence. We have a kit for this, uh, giving you the alpha beta the chains for the T cell receptors with an average of 70% success rate. Or you would want to go for the total mRNA since we have a beads with a DNA barcode, a capture poly T uh, tail that uh, would, after lysis of the cell on chip, capture your mRNA, reverse transcribe with an isothermic reaction on chip again. And on chip, we would be able to flow in primers with different fluorophores, annealing to these DNA barcodes, allowing us to completely identify the sequence of these DNA barcodes on beads. So we, it allows us to export all the uh, beads with the catch up mRNA in one go, bulk sequence them, and based on the sequence, trace it back to the original uh, well where it came from and link it to the phenotype. So you get the correlation between genomic information and phenotype very nicely. We did this for PVMCs, different clusters here shown, natural killer cells, works with T cells, and also with B cells. Here we confirmed just that it's a B cell showing that the CD19 staining was positive. Thank you very much for your attention. And I also want to thank our partners and collaborators and customers. What do you say? Any questions?